Hey, welcome to your last video on slicing. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a starting number and an ending number. And we're gonna try to use some positives and some negatives. So we can just get the full spectrum of everything we're going to expect when we're dealing with slicing and trying to get a substring. So this is kind of part three of slicing. So if you're brand new, then maybe you wanna check those out if you're struggling with it. However, if you're pretty familiar, this, this should give you what you need. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So let's say we want to grab a piece of a string and we know ahead of time we want to grab this word am. Well, let's think about where we would start and where we would stop to get this number. So to start, we're going to use just positive numbers and then I'll introduce a negative number in after that. So let's first figure out where to start. So if we start at the beginning, w is index zero and I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. So A is index six. And the starting position is always inclusive. So if you wanna include A, we need to put a six. So six. And then if we do this now, we can just confirm that we get A. However, we wanna get AM. So the next step would be to put the colon, which will actually go all the way to the end of the string and ask the deep question, am I? Now what we do is we put what character we want to go up to, not including. So we want to grab two characters, so we want to go to index eight. So we'll get six and we'll get seven. Running it and we get am. So we correctly grabbed that word. Now if you wanted to introduce a negative number in here, you could actually go from the right to say where to stop. So this is negative one, this is negative two, negative three, and then we don't want to include negative three, so that's going to be our stopping point. So instead of eight, we could say negative three, running this, and we get the same exact thing. So if you had a really, really long string and you just wanted to go up to like a few characters from the end, that is where a negative number is going to come in handy. If you're working closer to the beginning, then maybe positive numbers is where you want to go. Or if you want to grab a particular number of characters, you can do that as well. So as an example, let's say we have a variable start and we set it to six. And then what we could do is we could say, instead of six here, we could put start. Then what we can do is we can go all the way up to start plus two. So that's going to grab two characters. So numerically you can think of it as six being on the left and then six plus two or eight being on the right, which is what we originally had. However, this works just the same. So as you build more complex programs, you're going to shift from concrete numbers to more general numbers and variables. So something like this might be more realistic in seeing an actual code. So as an example, a lot of times for software, there will be a generated username or code built off of someone's name. So for example, if instead of having this terrible poem, we had a name, so I'll change the name of the variable to name here. And you might search through the string to find a space or some other way of figuring out where the first name and the last name are separated. So we could have a start of last and that would be index six actually. So we're already good to go. And then we wanted to grab the first three characters. You would just do start of last right here, all the way up to start of last plus three. Running this, uh, yeah, we wanna update poem, obviously. Running this now, and we get cur. So a lot of email addresses I've had have been like calcur. I also have a URL shortener, calcur slash whatever the link is and it's just a common convention for names. So that is how you could, as an example, grab the first three characters of someone's last name. Now generally, I try to only use negative numbers on the right side of the colon, just because that's how I can easiest think about, <laughs> easiest, come on man, get your English together. That's how I can best think about it. However, you can experiment and try all kinds of different combinations to work with your slicing and just become a slicing pro. If anybody wants to spend their time building a game, what you could do is you could make 
sort of like a, a fruit ninja kind of thing where uh, it's for programmers though so it's probably going to be not as fun and you're going to have a string up on the, on the phone and then a, a slice index range pops up and you have like a certain number of seconds to like slice between the characters that you're going to keep right so you can slice off the beginning slice off the end and, and you're left with what you have <laughs> I literally just thought of that on the spot, but that would be definitely pretty interesting, a good way to practice slicing. Now, there is something else in the documentation I want to show you guys, just if it helps you visualize it or if you're still struggling with the concept of slicing. And that is, when you're looking at indexes, it might help to consider them as the in-between of characters. So when you say you're grabbing from index 2 to index 4, you can visually see, oh, we start at 2, so that is why 2 is inclusive, and we stop at four, which is why four is exclusive because we haven't jumped that wall. So that is what I was kind of visualizing when I mentioned a wall in a previous video. However, maybe this will help you see it a little cleaner. This concept hasn't helped me a whole lot. However, if you're new or you're a visual person, maybe this will just hit the spot and you'll never have struggles with it again. Let me know in the comments below if this illustration is helpful to you guys and if you prefer more visual things like that or if you just like coding examples. So that's the end of slicing. Stay tuned for the next one.